Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about what is probably the most anticipated metal release of the year, which is Iron Maiden's 17th studio album Senjutsu. It's the first Iron Maiden album in 6 years, so it has been a long time since their last studio album, The Book of Souls. Actually it's the longest time between two Iron Maiden albums. So if you're an Iron Maiden fan, then smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe because my plan is to rank their albums sometime soon, and you don't want to miss out on that one. But today my focus will be solely on Senjutsu that came out earlier today. So this will be my first impressions of the album, and I have listened to the album on repeat since I got it. But this album is still new to me, so this video will be more of my first impressions than a full review, even if I have some initial opinions about the album. And Senjutsu was produced by Kevin Shirley, who has worked with the band since Brave New World. And the artwork was made by Mark Wilson, who has worked on and off with the band since 1993. Mark has also made some cool artworks for Judas Priest over the years. And both the producer and the artwork artist has been working with Iron Maiden for a long time, so they went with the familiar here. And the album also feels very familiar when listening to it. It has a bit of that old Iron Maiden sound to it. There is a bit of Fear of the Dark, but also a bit of that Blaze Bailey air of the band here. It also feels like the natural successor to the Book of Souls, because both albums being double albums, and these songs are long and on the epic side. There are no real short tracks to talk about on this album because the shortest song here is Days of Future Past, which is just above 4 minutes long, so all the songs on the album span from 4 to 13 minutes. The album opener Sinjutsu is a fine opener, maybe even the best since The Wicker Man from 2000's Brave New World. It's an epic track and it's quite heavy with some fine riffs and guitar work. It has a darker aura to it that I really do like, and it's in my opinion one of the better songs on the album. And then we have Stratego, and it's one of the shorter songs on the album, and it was a song that Iron Maiden released early to promote the album. So you might have already heard this one. And it has some nice galloping riffs to it that we more or less take for granted from Iron Maiden these days. It also has a melodic sensibility to it, and it's one of my favorite tracks of the album. The third track is the Riding on the Wall, and it's quite different from the first two songs. This one feels more like a song from any of Bruce Dickinson's solo albums. The song was written by Bruce and Adrian, so I guess it makes sense. And uh, the song has some bluesy rhythms to it, and some great singing from Bruce. It was also released early, so you guys have probably listened to it a few times already. And next up we have Lost in a Lost World, and it starts out on a softer note. But two minutes into the song some progressive sounding riffs kicks in that makes me think of the album Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. And the guitar melody lines towards the second half of the song reminds me a bit of Afraid to Shoot Strangers, an old Iron Maiden classic. And uh, the song ends on a softer note as well. The next song on the album is Days of Future Past, and it's the shortest track on the album. It's like a straightforward rocker with a rather catchy chorus. And it's not repeated where they sing Days of Future Past five times in a row. It's well crafted and a mature song. The Time Machine is just like Days of Future Past, a song about time traveling. And it starts out in a mood and melodic way, but then it speeds up a bit. And there are some melodic and catchy guitar melodies here that will stick with you. There are also some interesting tempo changes on this track that I really do enjoy. It's also a bit similar in its structure to Lost in a Lost World, which kind of starts out slow and then it speeds up towards the second half of the song, and then it ends in a softer way. Darkest Hour is like a World War II song, kind of like Ace is High, but this one is a bit more calm and reflective. It's a bit moody but also powerful in a sense. There's a lot of beautiful melodies in this song and it's the closest thing to a ballad on this record. The album then ends on three Steve Harris penned epics, Death of the Celts, 
the Parchment and Hell on Earth that are all above 10 minutes each. And the Death of the Celts reminds me a bit of the Clansman from Virtual Eleven, and it's a great song. The Parchment is a bombastic song and the longest track on the record, and it clocks in on 12 minutes and 39 seconds. And it has this power slave vibe to it that I really do like. And then the album ends on Hell on Earth, which also has some cool melodic riffing to it. Maybe not the perfect ending of the record, but it's an alright song. So overall I think that Senjutsu is a strong album. There aren't really any fillers on this album. And it feels like an intriguing listen the whole way through, even if it's an 82 minute long double record. And maybe there aren't any songs that has etched their way into my brain yet, but who knows, that might happen over time. The album has a great production, and it really sounds exactly like what I've expected from a modern day Kevin Shirley produced Iron Maiden album. The band has also three guitarists on this record, Jenny Gers, Adrian Smith and Dave Murray, and they take turns and I, I think it works out well. The songwriting is strong here, even if it might not be as catchy as some of those 80s Iron Maiden records. It's a slightly more mature and progressive Iron Maiden that we get to meet here. And everyone really delivers on this record, from Nico McBrain's drumming, to Steve Harris' bass, to the guitar trio, and Bruce still sounds good, even if he, like the rest of us, is getting older. Senjutsu is a strong Maiden album, and I think it will grow on me over time because it's very intricate, and uh, those albums tends to grow on me over time, and the catchy stuff can get a bit too repetitive, so I'm happy with Senjutsu, and I think it might end up on a lot of album of the year lists. I also like the theme of this record, with the Japanese warrior on the artwork. Even if I miss Derek Riggs art, I still think that this looks good, and it fits the album as well. And Senjutsu is a Japanese term and it means tactics and strategy, so I think it's a cool theme for the album. But now I'm curious to hear your opinions on Senjutsu. Have you heard it yet? Or have you perhaps only heard the two songs that they put out a few weeks ago? Let me know your opinions on the album down in the comment section below. And don't forget to leave a like so that this video can be recommended to others. And subscribe, because my Iron Maiden rank is coming up soon. And you can also support my channel by dropping a few dollars on Patreon, or by grabbing yourself some cool merch at the Ruthless Metal Store. And that's it folks, thanks for watching, and up the irons, bye bye.